Welcome to the Brunswick High Coaches Show with head coach Victor Floyd. Brought to you by Coastal Appliances, Port City Paint and Body, The Emerald Princess, Bruce Kennedy Tire, Apple Care Immediate Care, Misty's Element Massage, Christine Water, Files Insurance Agency, Jenkins Nissan, and by Marshside Grill. Now, here is your host, the voice of the Brunswick High Pirates, the professor, Teddy Bishop. Welcome to the Brunswick High Coaches Show with head coach Victor Floyd on the Bishop Media Sports Network. I am Teddy Bishop, and we are on location at Marshside Grill, where we will be each and every week on Sunday night at 7 p.m. for the entire season. This segment of the Victor Floyd Show is sponsored by Port City Paint and Body, the Emerald Princess, Coastal Appliances, Apple Care Immediate Care, Files Insurance Agency, Bruce Kennedy Tires, Christine Water and Pools, Misty's Element Massage, Jenkins Nissan, and Marshside Grill. And now joining us, the head coach of the Brunswick High Pirates, Victor Floyd. Good evening. Coach, your Pirates travel to Statesboro Friday night and beat the Blue Devils 28-7. That was a big win, a big region win, and it came on the road. It did. It was a must win for us, and we're just glad to uh, be in a position where we could make it happen. Statesboro muffed the opening kickoff. The Pirates recovered it on the 30 and punched it in for the touchdown. Did that kind of set the tone for the game? I thought it did. I thought it was a huge play for us uh, to be able to defer to the second half and also get the ball to their first play and cash in on it. Coach, Statesboro came out in a power eye formation rather than the wishbone. Did that surprise you, or is that something you had seen on the field? Well, we were kind of prepared for it. They have been mixing some eye you know, along with the wishbone and every run, so we were kind of prepared for both. Statesboro is a fairly young team, and they've been played with turnovers this season. And Friday night, they turned it over twice in the first six minutes of the game. To me, it seemed to give the Pirates some very good momentum that carried over pretty much throughout the game. They did. I thought that was huge for them to turn the ball over early and for us to take advantage of it. And we were able to get a quick 14 points. And uh, I think some of the younger guys may have dropped their heads a little bit at that point. And Statesboro's offense really is not designed to be a catch-up offense. Uh, with the running game that they've had in past past years, uh, the passing game is, is really not too much part of their attack. No, it's more designed to kind of three yards in the cloud of us. Get three, get three, get three, and go for it on fourth and one. So when they get behind, they have to get out of the norm for them and do something they're not accustomed to doing. Coach, I thought the Pirate defense was outstanding Friday night. Uh, did you change your defensive scheme for the Blue Devils? Not really. I just think uh, Coach Ferguson and defense staff had a real solid plan, and I thought our defensive line played real real hard up front and uh, made it real difficult. Uh, we were able to get three fourth down stops, which I thought were huge, uh, one of them being in the, in the red zone. So I thought our defensive line kind of set the tone. Statesboro only had 75 yards rushing and not too much more than 100 total yards. Was the Blue Devils ground game not quite as good as you thought it might be? Well, I don't know if it's not quite as good as it, we thought it uh, would be or if our defense just kind of stepped up to the task. Uh, they're still a real solid football team and, and real good on offensive line. And I thought our defense just played real well. Okay, speaking of Statesboro's defense, they lined up a full yard off the ball and then I guess tried to just react to the, to the read option. Uh, how did that figure into your game plan um, with, with Randon and, and the other uh, running backs? Well, we expect them to line up off the ball a little bit because they've done that every time they've played us uh, in the past since I've been here. But they backed up probably an extra yard. They probably were, you know, three yards off the ball, which was a little surprising, but it really didn't affect us a lot. Our offensive line did a pretty solid job staying on blocks. This is Brunswick Kai Coaches Show with head coach Victor Floyd on the Bishop Media Sports Network. Coach, you mentioned the, the pirate 
defense uh, coming up with some really big stops and the one you mentioned in particular in the red zone uh, when, the, when the Pirate defense came up with that stop it, it looked like Statesboro might score maybe cut the lead to one touchdown and be right back in the game but as you said that was a huge huge stop. Now that was big for us and I thought some of our seniors on defense really <laughs> stepped up and got, kept everybody involved and focused and we were able to make a play when we needed to. Great play up front out of Chris Coward and um, Devonis Johnson. Um, Sherrod Frazier had a huge game for us, and those guys were pretty relentless all night. Coach, you mentioned Chris Coward. Um, I, I thought he played exceptionally well. It seemed like he was in the States for a backfield just about all night. He, he did. He played like he's capable of playing, and that's pretty much what we expect out of Chris on a night-to-night -night basis. We made uh, Chris our uh, co-player of the game for that game along with, with uh, Randy Jernigan. So uh, big effort by uh, Chris Coward and the, the other uh, de defensive standouts for the Pirates. Um, Coach, I thought maybe the only letdown on defense was the halfback pass that set up Statesboro's long touchdown. Was that just a breakdown in assignments? Uh, it was, and it was just a perfect call at the right time. I mean, they had been running the ball, running the ball, running the ball. And uh, Jalen Jackson's a good corner for us. He's just a freshman, and his eyes were in the backfield. And uh, they were able to get a big play, but it, it, to his credit, you know, he ran the guy down, ran on, ran up on him, and stopped him on about the 25 or, you know, somewhere in that range. So, uh, if we'd have bowed up back a little bit more right there, we could have kept him out. I don't think the halfback pass was as huge as the couple of plays right after. You mentioned Jalen being a freshman. Uh, you, you played quite a few freshmen Friday night that really rose to the occasion. We did. We started uh, three freshmen and had two others to play and uh, played a total of five. And I thought that was big. Um, these young guys were starting, accepting the challenge and they're taking advantage of the reps they're getting. Any other defensive players that you want to come in from Friday night? Well, just the defense as a whole. And I thought our defense staff did a real good job. Just holding them under 100 yards and run based team and just holding them to a touchdown. It's a big feat to them itself. Coach, once again, we're talking about Randon Jernigan, your freshman quarterback. Unofficially, we had him with 206 rushing yards. Did you see something on film from Statesboro's previous games that helped maybe set up your offensive scheme? Uh, not really. I mean, it's, it's based on uh, being able to make the right reads. And Randon did a good job Friday night of making the right reads at the right time. And the offense is just designed to take what, whatever the defense gives us. And, and that's what he did. Coach, people up in the press box were impressed with Randon's ability uh, to read the defense. This is kind of a, maybe a loaded question to a certain extent. How do you keep a 14-year-old kid humble that's that, that is that good? Well, I think, and, you know, in football, uh, they have what's called shoulder pads and helmets, and uh, usually that keeps you pretty humble because at any point it could be over for you or, you know, anything can happen. You could, you could get knocked out or whatever. There are a lot of things that keep you humble in football. I don't think it's that difficult. Ram is a very level-headed young man, and you know, he comes from a good family. They help him keep stay grounded. So between coaching staff, players, and you know, just the possibility of bad things happening, I think that helps keep him grounded. More to come on the Victor Floyd Coaches Show on the Bishop Media Sports Network. Right now, we're going to take a break and have some words from our sponsors. Coastal Appliances is your one-stop shop for Whirlpool washers and dryers, Whirlpool refrigerators, and so much more. Coastal Appliances offers free delivery and service after installation and have also been in business for over 30 years. 4727 Altama, next to Sonic, and on the web at appliancesbrunswickga.com or give them a call at 912-267-0132. Coastal Appliances, Glen County's only specialty appliance store. When you are in need of a reputable body shop, Port City Paint and Body in Brunswick is your answer. Located at 2509 Norwood Street, just down from Twin Oaks, 
Port City Paint and Body understands your needs and cares about your car and you. Port City Paint and Body works with any insurance company. Give them a call for a free estimate at 912-265-9524 or on the web at portcitybodyshop.com. Port City Paint and Body, home of the lifetime guarantee and go Pirates! Hop aboard for Texas Hold'em Tournaments, Roulette, Poker, lots of slot action, food, music, and more. Labor Day weekend, Sunday, August 31st, 7 p.m. Cruises depart from Brunswick, Georgia. Call 800-842-0115 or visit EmeraldPrincessCasino.com. Must be 18 years of age and present a government-issued photo ID to board. I'm Jenkins Nissan. 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 I am Jenkins Nissan. I'm Donnie Jenkins. We're all Jenkins Nissan, and together we want to show you just how easy buying and servicing your car should be. So please stop by and experience the Jenkins Nissan difference. Look for the red and white Nissan tent at the corner of Chapel Crossing Road and the Spur. Or visit us online at JenkinsNissanOfBrunswick.com. Get affordable health care when you need it. At Apple Care Immediate Care, our team of compassionate health care providers is dedicated to treating each patient with the highest standard in health care. Located at 1111 Glencoe Parkway, Apple Care is open Monday through Friday, 7.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m., Saturday, 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Apple Care welcomes all walk-ins from pediatric to adult ages and accepts most insurance plans. Visit us at AppleCareDoctors.com and like us on Facebook. Welcome back to the Brunswick High Coaches Show with head coach Victor Floyd on the Bishop Media Sports Network. I'm Teddy Bishop on location from Marseille Grill. This segment of the Victor Floyd Show is brought to you by Coastal Appliances, Port City Paint and Body, The Emerald Princess, Jenkins Nissan, and by Apple Care Immediate Care. Coach, we're again talking uh, some more about Brandon Jernigan. And um, of course, we, we got there early and went down uh, into the locker room and talked to Brandon and some of the other players a little bit. And you mentioned specifically keeping him humble, that the players on the team, and he seems to have a, a very good rapport uh, for those few minutes that, that I was in the locker room. He seemed to have a very good rapport with all of the players. He does. I mean, Brandon keeps everything in perspective, I think. He's not an egotistical kid, and it has a lot to do with it. Uh, you know, he puts team above self. And as long as he does that, the guys will always respect him, always play hard for him and with him. Coach, I thought John Grant did a good job coming back from the ankle injury. Uh, unofficially, we had him for 89 yards rushing, so his ankle must have held up pretty well. And how was it after the game? Uh, he was fine. Uh, John did a real good job for us. We were glad to have him back because John's one of those young men who goes 110% all the time. And uh, we were glad to see him come back and have a strong game. And we definitely need him to run well down the stretch. And continuing with the Russian stats, uh, Sean Smith had 65 yards on his six carries. He seems to get better every week. And Sean gave us a little spark uh, from the backfield because what he possesses, uh, you know, he's able to hit it very quick and uh, take advantage of it. You don't have to block as long. So uh, we, we try to use Sean in the backfield to, uh, to give us a little spark from time to time. He did a good job on Friday. Coach Randon didn't throw the ball very much Friday night. Uh, I think he had 50 or so yards passing. Was this uh, pretty much by design, or was it just predicated on the fact that the rushing game was clicking so well? Well, uh, Statesboro was rushing three, dropping eight most of the night, so that kind of invites you to run the ball. And uh, when we saw them doing that, we would you know, just kind of take advantage of what they give us, and they were giving us the run as opposed to being able to throw it, so we didn't force it. Any other stalwarts on offense that you want to mention? Um, I think you've covered all the names. And you mentioned uh, the offensive line uh, 
with their blocking assignments and um, all the read options and, and the other plays uh, were, were really picking up key blocks for them. Right, the guys up front did a good job. Anytime he rushed for over 350 yards, the offensive line had to play well. And uh, they did a good job Friday night. We just hope we can continue to improve in that area. And, uh, Coach, the special teams, I thought, had a big night. Uh, Tyler Mitchell seemed to be in the groove with his kickoffs, and uh, especially his extra points. All four of his PATs were strong kicks that were right through the uprights. I know some of his extra points have kind of been popped up a little bit, but he seems to be getting better as the season progresses. Um, and had, I thought, really strong extra points Friday night. He did. Uh, Tyler got our player of the game. We were excited about how well he did on the Friday. Uh, he was strong on all four PATs. Did an even better job kicking off. Uh, he put the defense in real good positions. He was partially uh, give him credit for the first play of the game. He kicked it so high that the guy fumbled. We were able to get on it. So that was a, a huge momentum builder. And uh, he's got to be commended for that. Once again, you're listening to the Victor Floyd Coaches Show on the Bishop Media Sports Network. Uh, Coach, you touched on this a, a little bit. Um, how are the Pirates injury-wise after the Statesboro game? Well, um, a slot receiver, Kenneth Dallas, he did a little something to his uh, knee. We'll find out exactly uh, what that is tomorrow. I think uh, Mars Wilson had a bruise. But other than that, we got out pretty healthy, and we should have almost everybody back this week, definitely in two weeks or so, like that. And what's the status on um, AJ? He's fine. Uh, he'll play this week. He'll play Friday night. Yeah. Very good. Coach, before we move on and talk some about the game coming up this week, any other comments that you want to make on the Statesboro game? I'm just, just glad we made it through it and, you know, it's behind us now. We can move forward and look, look forward to the rest of it. Coach, this Friday night is homecoming, and there will be a lot of festivities going on all week at the school. How do you keep that from being a distraction for your team? Well, homecoming is always a distraction. You know, it's very hard for guys to stay focused with so many things going on from day to day. But, uh, you know, it'll be a constant, constant reminder, a constant burn for us to try to uh, keep the guys focused and not getting caught up in all the events going on. But we, we tell them all the time that that means a thing if you don't win the game. So we're, we're hoping they'll take heed. Coach Tom coming game is against South Effingham. The Mustangs have played tough for, uh, for the most part this year. How will you get your team ready for Friday night? Will you make any changes for the Mustangs, or will it be basic Pirates football? It will just be basic Pirates football. They have a good team. Uh, they're 72-1 right now. Uh, they shut Statesboro out 17-0. Uh, they fly around here with a good job on defense. Uh, they have one of the better quarterbacks that I've seen in our region this year. So, you know, it's going to be a challenge, but I think our guys will be up for a task. Coach, you're halfway through the regular season, 3-2 overall, 2-1 in the region. Don't get kind of control of its own destiny as far as the playoffs. What are you telling your team halfway through the regular season? Well, right now, we're just taking it one at a time. We set a goal a couple weeks ago to get to the open date 3-0. And uh, we have a week left, so we, we're just taking small steps at a time and not getting ahead of ourselves and trying to focus on the games one at a time. We will be right back to the Brunswick Kai Coaches Show with head coach Victor Floyd on the Bishop Media Sports Network. Bruce Kennedy Tire is your hometown destination for tires. Michelin, Goodyear, and all the brands you trust. But don't let the name fool you. Bruce Kennedy Tire, located at 2928 Norwich Street, does more than just tires. Brakes, alignments, repair work, and more than I can mention. Bruce Kennedy is locally owned and operated so you get the best service in Glen County. So give Bruce a call at 912-264-6578. Bruce Kennedy Tire, a name you can trust. Files Insurance Agency, located at 5623 Altama Avenue, 
a quarter mile north of the Target Shopping Center, offers a wide range of products to protect you and your family from the unknown. Auto insurance, life, health, flood, commercial, bonds, including shrimp bonds, and so much more. Give Files Insurance Agency a call at 912-264-0100 or visit them online at filesinsurance.com. Pristine Water is your destination for pools, spas, and pool supplies. From installation to maintenance, Pristine Water is your best choice in all of Southeast Georgia for your next pool or spa. Give Pristine Water a call at 912-264-9233 for a free estimate or stop on in at 166 Key Circle Drive or check Pristine Water out online at pristinewaterandpools.com and go Pirates! Relax, Misty's Ella Massage specializes in helping you do just that. Located at 138 Village Market on St. Simons Island, Misty's Element Massage offers deep tissue massages, therapeutic massages, scrubs, creams, body wraps, and much more. The perfect gift for that special someone, not to mention sports massages for that aching muscle. Schedule your appointment today at 912-224-0198 or on the web at mistyselement.com. Marshside Grill is your home for the best burgers, spuds, and seafood around. Come enjoy the view out by the water while taking in an ice-cold beverage. Marshside Grill is also your home for the Brunswick High Pirates Coaches Show with head coach Victor Floyd and a proud sponsor of Brunswick High and local high school athletics. So stop in any day or night of the week for the best view and atmosphere in the Golden Isles. And also, check us out on Facebook. Go Pirates! Welcome back to the Brunswick High Pirate Coaches Show with head coach Victor Floyd on the Bishop Media Sports Network. I'm Teddy Bishop and we are on location with Coach Floyd at Marshside Grill. This segment is brought to you by Bruce Kennedy Tire, Files Insurance Agency, Christine Water and Pools, and by Misty's Element Massage. Coach, I, we've talked about homecoming this uh, this Friday night against South Effingham, and I know you, you're not looking past them. But after that game, your Pirates have a bye week, and that will give you two weeks to prepare for Coffee County, one of the top teams in our state classification. Is the bye week a plus, or would you rather play them without the extra week off? No, at this point in the season, the bye week is definitely a plus for us because we've had some guys who've been nicked up, laid up all season. It allows them to get you know, a little more time to heal. It you know, allows us a little more preparation time. It gives us a chance to get out, go out and scout uh, you know, our next couple of opponents and it gives us a chance to prepare. So bye week's always good late in the season like this. So you you really won't have Friday night off. You'll be scouting somewhere. <laughs> oh, yeah, no doubt about it. Yes. I'm sure I'll be at uh, Coffee South Effingham, I'm sure. Um, and, and Coach, um, we talked a little bit uh, earlier about the offensive line. I, I know you seem to be plagued with injuries in the offensive line. And uh, we were talking a little bit before we came on the air about the extra week. Um, they give you an opportunity to, to get all your regular starters in there at the same time for only the, maybe the second time this season. That's what we're hoping. Right now, we only played one game. We've had all five starters, and uh, right now we're missing uh, one, and, and that's causing a problem. Causing a problem for us. So we're hoping to get him back, uh, and hopefully everybody will be healthy by Coffee County, and that's based upon us not losing anyone this week. Okay, the game against Coffee is in Douglas, and it's always tough to play there. It is. Anytime you're on the road, it's uh, tough to play on the road. But Douglas specifically is a tough place to play. So, you know, it's going to take a lot of focus and preparation on our part. Um, Coach, any updates on former Pirates' performances from uh, Saturday? Well, uh, Justin plays pretty well against Georgia from what I understand. I had seen statistics and only caught about a quarter of the game. Uh, Jarvis had, I think, 106 yards rushing and 20 carries uh, in a win against Miles Powell this past weekend. Uh, Demetrius only had one catch. 
I mean, the Old Dominion win Friday night at uh, Middle Tennessee. And I hadn't seen statistics on anyone else yet. I, I usually check those sometime about Monday morning. But uh, we had a handful of guys in action this weekend. I know Chris Anderson and Ava Sweetie had open dates, so I know they did not play. In case you were talking about uh, not watching the uh, Georgia Tennessee game, and I know your son Trooper had a, a travel team football game Saturday, and I, I know you were excited about about his performance in that game, a future pilot. <laughs> yes, I was. He, he loves the game. I'm excited about where he is right now, for sure. This is the Brunswick High Coaches Show with Victor Floyd on the Bishop Media Sports Network. And uh, Coach, after uh, we, we mentioned the schedule after you play uh, South Effingham this week, and then you have the bye week, uh, then the Pirates travel to Douglas to play Hawkin County. Certainly, uh, that figures to be a very uh, uh, all the region games from here on in, of course, are important. Um, but that could have a, a big impact on the on the region standings. Uh, very well could be. Every game now is important as far as the playoffs are concerned. Um, but we're hoping that that Coffin County game is extremely important. Coach, after uh, your Pirates travel to Douglas, back in Glen County Stadium to take on Richmond Hill. Um, Richmond Hill has, has played well at times this year. So, um, again, as you said, all the, all the region games from here on in are important. And that one certainly takes on some importance too, coming off the, the game against Coffee County. Yes, yeah, no doubt about it. Richmond Hill is back to back team win season, so you know they have a lot of momentum in the program right now. They're playing real solid. And then after Richmond Hill, you'll travel to Hinesville to take on Bradwell. Uh, again, that's another place that's um, well, as you said, any road game is tough, but uh, Hinesville is, is certainly a tough place to, to play also. Right, this will be my first trip to Bradwell, but I've heard that uh, Hinesville is a pretty tough place to play, so I'm assuming it's like everywhere else, and it'll be a challenge for us. And then the final regular season game on November the 7th against Ware County. Um, number one ranked team in the state in our classification, and uh, certainly that looms to, uh, at this point, uh, that looms as, a, as another huge game. Right, and when we get to that point, I'm sure that will be a huge game, but right now, where's, you know, the top team in the state, and they're playing really, really good football on the coast teams in their first year. Coach, were there any surprises from Friday night in the region, um, or the area, or in the state? Well, in our region, uh, I, I can't say there are really any surprises. Uh, the teams that you probably expect to win, the one. Uh, in, in the state, I didn't hear about a lot of upsets. I know this coming week is going to be a big week in Region 1 because everybody's undefeated and they start region play this week, so somebody's got to lose. So that will certainly change there. Uh, and talking about Friday night, uh, Coffee County had a Pretty close game in the first half, but then pulled away late in the third quarter and fourth quarter. That sounds like they got going um, offensively and defensively in the second half, but I think it was 21-19 at the half, and uh, about midway to third, coffee kind of exploded. We want to thank you for joining us for the Brunswick High Coaches Show with head coach Victor Floyd of the Brunswick High Pirates on the Bishop Media Sports Network. We invite you to come out to Marshside Grill and join us every Sunday night at 7 o'clock for the Victor Floyd Show. And we did have some loyal Pirate fans come out tonight for the show and we want to acknowledge the Brunswick High fans who came to listen to the Victor Floyd Coach uh, here on the Bishop Media Sports Network. Yes, we definitely say thank you. Appreciate your time. And that's going to wrap it up for Marshside Reel for the Victor Floyd Coaches Show. The head pirate himself has been with us tonight. And I'm Teddy Bishop signing off for the Bishop Media Sports Network. Good night.